morning everybody how is everybody today it is friday yes tgif amen can i can i get an amen <laughs> all right so today we are going to study um psalm 78 22. the text says <clears throat> the bible says not the text the bible says for they did not believe in god or trust in his deliverance Wow, does this sound like the world we live in today or what? It seems like no one believes in God nor trusts in his deliverance. Yet we know that there is a large number of believers. The non-believers seem to have a louder voice than the believers though. <clears throat> all right, all right. Let's get a little context on our verse before I really go off on a tangent. Goodness, this sounds so much like today, though. Okay, we just we just really, really need to hear the whole chapter because when you hear and read it, you'll think the same thing. Let's start back with verse number one. This is Psalm 78, verse number one. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from the old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. Does this sound familiar? We're taught by our parents who were taught by their parents and so forth and so on. If we just would learn from what they have taught us, and not try to go off and do our own thing. <sighs> All right. Verse number four. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. Verse five. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. Verse six, so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. Hello. Not that our ancestors were like that. They were more uh, godly than we are, we are, but um, I think all this probably started around, well, started at the beginning of, the time, of time, but here in America around like the flower children type, type time, people got away from God. Uh, verse nine, the men of Ephraim, the, though armed with bows, turned back on the battle, day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wonders he had shown them. He did miracles in the sight of their ancestors in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan, or Zon, or whatever, however you pronounce that. Verse 13. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand up like a wall. He guided them with the cloud by day and with light by the fire from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them water as abundant as the seas. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers. Look! At all of this, God was right there with them. Verse 17, but they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. This is why I want to shake the Israelites. <laughs> they willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? Duh, yeah, he can. True, this is verse 20, true, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us a bread? 
Can he supply meat for his people? Can you believe these people? That miracle wasn't good enough. Can he do what we specifically ask for, or rather what we particularly tell him we want? Oh, that attitude just drives me crazy, excuse me. Verse 21, when the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel. For they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. I don't blame God for being angry. Just reading this, I'm angry with these people. God was there to witness it. I am just reading. And again, this all sounds just like the times we were living in. The people have turned away from God. And even if they witness a miracle, they would demand something else. Verse 23. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna from the people to eat. He gave them grain of heaven. 25. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and by his power made the south wind blow. He rained down meat on them like dust, birds like sand on the shore, seashore. He made them come down inside their camp, all around their tents. They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. But before they turned from what they craved, even while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. Do you blame him? I don't. Sometimes I want to scream at people. Do you see what God is doing in your life? Yet they don't want that miracle. They, they, they want another specific miracle. Ugh. Society as a whole does not see what or how God is working in their lives. It's really a shame. All right, let's continue on with verse 32. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. They remembered that God was their rock, that God most high was their redeemer. But then they would flatter him with their mouths, lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful. He forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them. Time after time he restrained his anger and did not stir up his full wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. We'll stop right here. Aren't we all glad that we have a God that restrains his anger? I mean, seriously. He knows we are merely human beings. He knows we are sheep that follow a leader. My prayer is that more and more people turn to God rather than away from God. And that they, we, don't test God just know he is the only true God, the one true God. This word study is about the word believe, but these people, like so many today, don't really believe in God. Join me in praying for the unbelievers. I challenge you this week, coming up, to pray for your country. I also challenge you to pick somebody that you know that either doesn't believe in God or is testing God and pray for this person. Each one of us can make a difference in our own little world. Like I said yesterday, um, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I, I know people you don't know. You know people I don't know. So in our own little world, we can make a huge difference. So let's pray. Dear Lord, Thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be alive and breathing. 
Lord, I pray for the unbelievers that they will turn to you and turn to you full on, like 180 degrees, never looking back at their sinful nature. Um, Lord, I pray that you will um, touch lives through this Bible study. You, Lord, are the one that has given me the words to write and to speak, and Lord, I thank you for that. Uh, I pray that each and every one of us that are watching this video will get something out of these words that you have supplied, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Y'all have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.